course, I would like to welcome, welcome you first uh, the Vienna Biocenter Climate Lecture Series. I would like to introduce you both, so Isabella Kleringer and Simon Mainolo from Eco Campus Wien. And actually, I'm looking very much looking forward to, to what you're going to present. So we are seeing the campus not only as a place for learning and research, but also as an ecosystem. And uh, Simon and Isa worked uh, mostly at the Akaha campus. And we hope to learn something from you, something we can also translate to our campus. And uh, uh, very excited to introduce you. And Isabella, you will start. So um, Nico, please and share the slide. And I think you can share your presentation. And the meeting will be recorded. So later on, we can share it and uh, foster the debate. So please, Isabella. Um, the floor is yours. So, um, yeah, thank you for the invitation. I will share my screen. Um, you can you see it? We can see it, but in presenter mode. So I think if if you can make the slide. Um, what do you mean with presenter mode? Like we can also see the side slides. So if if it's fine with you, we we go ahead. Otherwise, you can also uh, make you like see, put... uh, you see the side slides. Oh, I see it. Okay. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. So how can I hide them actually? Oh, but I think it's not a problem. So it's nice. If no, no, we can see it. So go ahead. No worries. Yes. Okay. Thank fine. you. So uh, thank you for the invitation and um, we are very happy to present EcoCampus and uh, Vienna and our project EcoCampus Wien um, in Perutz Labs um, at the Climate Lab. And um, as you all probably already know, we are a group of main, also mainly students, but um, there is also some people who are not at university anymore and um, basically citizen scientists. And we, we try to um, focus on the campus as a habitat and as a habitat for fauna and flora and, um, and also as a part of a very important green infrastructure of the city. So in general, the campus is as well a public park and uh, therefore it is um, really high, highly uh, frequented. I mean, there's a lot of people passing through and a lot of people having the opportunity to actually enjoy nature on the campus. This is what uh, makes the campus also really um, interesting. And as you see here, it's a short overview um, with our logo that we actually drew ourselves and um, the, all the, the main areas where we are working. So it's the campus of the University of Vienna in the ninth district. And it contains the dentistry clinic and other areas as well. And we are also up to actually, um, how to say, we, we try to work further and um, yeah, spread our work to other places as well. And uh, the biodiversity on campus is really interesting. I mean, the, um, the species that live there. So we have some focuses set and one of the focuses we have is research. So we try to um, work with citizen science methods, but uh, scientific methods as well. And we try to um, do a lot of cooperations and work together with others or invite others even to study the, the, yeah, the natural diversity on the campus. And, and there is uh, a lot of work we do is specific about species and habitat con um, conservation. So uh, we try to implement measures in the public in the care of the public park and the, um, the meadows, for example, um, that, uh, that increase the biodiversity. Um, yeah, so uh, for the first uh, project that we were up to, I can show you this overview. You can see that the campus is actually located in a very dense area in the city center. In the land district, you can see even the, the, the yeah, really huge hospital of the city of Vienna on the left side. And you see all these different spots marking observations that people made in our citizen science project. 
and you can see that it's um, nearly 2,000 observations. So we are heading towards that uh, really fast because we started actually just one year and some months ago with the project. And we already um, detected 600 species, different uh, kinds. And uh, there is, uh, yeah, I think to today it's even 50 people who observe. So it's actually really nice. And you can see that there is a uh, different um, zones. So the campus um, is, uh, has Höfe structure. I don't know actually what that means. Uh, it's yard, yeah, basically you can say. Um, that it's a yard structure and it's also some kind of um, mega block actually. So there is no traffic inside, it's just pe pedestrians walking and there is pathways um, that are sealed, but most of the areas is meadows and uh, green areas, even forests um, are existing there. So there again a map um, that we worked uh, with in iNaturalist which is a platform for citizen science and researchers use it as well. And you can see here um, some species that we actually were able to, to prove um, that they are living on the campus or at least uh, hunting there like the owl is doing it. And this year, for example, the owl that you see in the second row uh, was even having a nest on the campus, which was really uh, joyful to us. And you can also see uh, a really nice species down below in the fourth row. It's um, Libitea keltis. So it comes along with keltis, the tree that is actually, that used to be Mediterranean, but um, due to climate changes um, that go rapidly, um, yeah, towards a very new climate reality. And there is also, new butterfly species coming along with that. And Keltis is actually specialized on the Keltis tree. So we already had this species on the campus as well. So what we basically do is we preserve, restore, restore <laughs> urban um, nature and local biodiversity. And the citizen science project on the campus is actually a quite big part of that. Um, we also take part in different um, events like uh, City Nature Challenge, for example, and we also collaborate with uh, different institutions like the Students' Union, or of course as well, try to work together with stakeholders of the campus because um, to be able to implement um, different yeah, measures on the campus, it's of course necessary to have a okay uh, from them. So there's, for example, the federal real estate company, as well as the University of Vienna and the medical University of Vienna. And um, therefore, we try to create really different learning opportunities for students, but uh, as well as citizen scientists or people with an interest for that um, public park, you can say, and habitat um, to join us, join activities, um, yeah, do research on their own with the app or just get more interested into urban nature. Um, one of uh, a very a very specific and wide thing we do is biodiversity mainstreaming. So it's specific and uh, wide at the same time because um, we specifically think about biodiversity in different contexts and try to implement it in the university um, on a political, um, agenda that means that we're going into meetings with the University of Vienna. We try to contact people and we already have contacts uh, with the Alliance of Sustainable um, Universities. And we there, so we are, we joined the, the group for biodiversity there and we try to work uh, together with them on a paper about uh, campus as a learning site and as a, as a site of biodiversity and uh, try to, yeah, to make something like a handbook um, and show what that could mean also, um, including all our experience that we made on the campus of the city of Vienna. And as well, we are in the um, network of higher education initiatives for biodiversity. Um, Universita Biophilia, 
um, and you can see the link. So we actually are part of that network that I think it's around 50 universities in um, German speaking countries mainly until um, today we don't have English speaking universities, but we already have a contact with nature positive universities, which is a wider network um, coming from Oxford, I think. And we actually exist as a network since more than two years already. And the next weekend there will be a meeting in Berlin. So you see that there is a lot of networking going on and we try to um, yeah, bring the, the very important issue of biodiversity in the university. So here a short overview of activities and give you some impressions about our group and what activities we do um, look like. Um, you can see a panel discussion um, about public spaces and nature education that we were part of in March this year. And then you see a photo in the center of 2022 when we were actually building our, this was uh, one of our first projects, we were building nesting boxes to hang them later on a campus. And on the top, on the right side, you can see that we have been uh, part of uh, this platform of nature education and we were presenting uh, materials and um, did networking with others um, in Vienna who work on nat nature education. And down below, you see us with the nesting boxes. And on the right side, you can see Simon and Tom doing um, the bumblebee monitoring. So um, what we generally did since October 2021, since we um, exist as a group of people working together for the biodiversity on the campus, is we did, for example, winter bird counts uh, in 2022 and 2023, actually, as well. And we, uh, we set the campus project up in iNaturalist, which is really uh, a big, big thing because um, it's kind of a, a huge citizen science project. And then we were building the nesting boxes. And we also built a lot of networks and contacts with um, people working in the University of Vienna because it's a really big institution and we needed to first get in contact with all the stakeholders on the, on the campus to really um, be able to work further with the issues we wanted to work on. And what we as well did was we were rescuing bats um, from a building on the campus. Um, there was a, a net to protect the, the yard of the building um, from doves. And we actually um, went inside after uh, we found out together with the NGO and we tried to bring the bats outside. Uh, later the net was removed and from that we kept contact with the institution and developed uh, protection measures and even a project uh, where, we, where we will create new nesting boxes for bats as well on the campus. And we as well uh, prevent, prevented, maybe, hopefully, uh, future clearings of a small forest on the campus um, that was cut down this year. And yeah, we were intervening and yeah, the outcome is that it will hopefully never happen again. So uh, one animal that actually lived there in that forest or still lives there and lives on the campus is that badger spotted yesterday on the campus. Um, so it's a very uh, actual photo. Um, I just made it yesterday night from the on the way home, and uh, you see that uh, there is really interesting animals on the campus. Um, one of the core species we have and um, that we try to protect on the campus and create uh, measures therefore are wild bees. Um, so. Um, there's a lot of nesting sites on the campus in the soil because um, there is uh, really a lot of grasslands and people are walking uh, through the meadows so it's perfect conditions for wild bees it's very sunny it's a very good microclimate and here you see a bee coming out of a nest in the community garden on the campus and these photos um, so you see uh, another kind of our umbrella species it's Andrena Taraksaki on the campus. Um, 
there were some people from the Natural Historical Museum to visit us and help us um, yeah, identify species. And on the right side, you see that we were installing stems for wild bees um, with landscape architecture students, for example, on the campus. And especially um, in, in context of learning together, we offer a lot of different um, walks as well. So we try to invite people to, um, to learn about urban nature through walking the site. Um, to talk in general about um, the, the, yeah, the multi-perspective of the current crisis, um, we have here um, a really good graphic that shows, um, you can see the link, it's Biodiversity Stripes, you can check the website, it's, um, yeah, it's based on the data of Living Planet Index 2022, and it shows us, yeah, the decrease of biodiversity below and um, think the increase of um, temperature up and it's not i mean it's uh, 50 years of, of time so i think we all know about the big crisis we're in and um, here again you see um, the, the stripes for the loss of biodiversity so this is also really a reason why we are so active because we actually um yeah we want to do something we want to um maybe give a good example but basically be active and yeah nature is i think you can say nature is interest uh, of all of us in the group and therefore we try to um, improve something so now i'll give the um, talk to simon Sorry, just I was muted. Um, bumblebees are uh, one species that we are currently working with, basically. Uh, the bumblebees, as a short uh, introduction, are a genus of uh, true bees. So basically, they're wild bees as well. Um, there's 40 to 45 species living in Austria. So it's technically a rather small group, but they still have a broad variety of habitats that they inhabit, uh, as well as different lifestyles. So uh, bumblebees, like other bees, live socially in, uh, in hives, but there's also some that live as parasites um, in the hives of other bumblebees. So there's a lot of diversity in this rather small group, which makes them interesting. And particularly in the context of uh, climate change uh, and biodiversity loss, bumblebees are a, a especially vulnerable group. Uh, because as you can see in this diagram on the uh, on the right, uh, it shows uh, the the distances that several bee species, uh, uh, bumblebees among them, uh, can travel uh, at different temperatures, and it's uh, clear to see that their their as temperatures go up, their ability to travel distances decreases, and combined with the habitat loss and the less habitats you have, the, the farther you have to fly to collect uh, the food that you need. Uh, it's clear that this uh, impacts bumblebee populations uh, greatly. So uh, in the other diagram, you can see uh, loss in uh, bumblebee biodiversity across the world, which is rather shocking, especially in Southern and Central Europe. Uh, where we are particularly affected by climate change in terms of uh, reaching this uh, problematic higher temperature for bumblebees. So there is a bumblebee monitoring uh, project, uh, which uh, the University for Agricultural Sciences, uh, the BOKU, I think it's Agricultural Sciences in English, uh, have started. And it's a citizen science project uh, involving uh, citizen scientists all over Austria. And uh, EcoCampus has been participating in this uh, project uh, by recording uh, bumblebees on the campus. And here on the right, you can see uh, photos of bumblebees that we have uh, taken uh, on campus actually in 
the course of this project. So this is one uh, current topic that we are working on uh, on campus, these bumblebees. Uh, bumblebee season has only properly started now, so we haven't uh, recorded that many species. I think it's four or five species, but that was in this very wet spring, uh, with lots of rain, so uh, we ridden, uh, conditions weren't optimal. So I'm hoping the next time we, we will count bumblebees will be uh, a lot more uh, successful than the last ones. Um, the second thing we're currently working on is the uh, Aufblühen project, which uh, German for blossoming, uh, blooming, uh, which is a project to improve biodiversity friendly spaces on the campus over the course of the next three years. And uh, we've been granted a uh, large award from the Blühende Österreich Foundation, which uh, we are obligated to say is uh, funded by the Federal Ministry for Climate Action. Uh, here on the, on the right, you can see uh, our crew, our group at the uh, award ceremony where it's a very nice afternoon. <laughs> Uh, the aims of this project are uh, threefold. Uh, uh, for once, we want to plant more diverse and natural vegetation on several spots at the campus. We've already, after uh, long discussions, uh, gotten permission by the university to uh, plant these, these uh, new uh, flowering plants and other types of plants like hedges and um, also improve the mowing plan uh, on campus. So the uh, grass uh, areas, the meadows on campus are being mowed way too often as is often the case. And we've already um, gotten the university to decrease and, uh, and less intensively mow these areas. And we are going to be implementing scything, so mowing with a scythe um, on several areas that, that we've been granted permission to do that. And also we're going to increase uh, these nesting uh, opportunities, nesting boxes that we've already created for birds and also uh, for bats. Uh, that's And furthermore, with all these uh, projects that we are working on, we want to really create a space for public outreach work also. So that's like the second pillar of our work there. Uh, additionally to improving these spaces uh, practically for animals, we want to use this project as a pilot area for what urban biodiversity can look like uh, on an area like the campus. And we want to do this by hosting a variety of different walks and workshops, uh, especially for uh, schools uh, where children can learn practical uh, things to do for natural conservation. And just to demonstrate to the public at this highly frequented uh, spot in the city, what urban biodiversity can look like. And with that, I'm going to hand the microphone back on over to Isa. <laughs> I'm going to stop sharing now. Super. Um, thank you, Simon. And here again to the activities that we already had in the past at the campus. So there, there you can see a um, yeah, small overview. For example, last autumn, we did some leaf piles for insects and hedgehogs on the campus. So you see, um, the team in action. Um, then again, um, you see um, the situation when we're building nesting boxes for birds in, in a wood, wood maker space, and we did a workshop for it together. Um, we used um, yeah, a proven kit to, as, a, as a building plan, and we used uh, waste wood, and we did upcycling, and we spent a whole day they're working together with wood. So it was also a really nice opportunity to get, to get it, uh, to know each other better and have a nice time doing something nice for the environment. And here you can see the boxes. Uh, it's actually whole and open fronted nesting boxes. And yeah, you can also see the, the small area um, that was uh, later cut down. So um, 
yeah, there we we installed some of our nest boxes there. And uh, another species we are working with are bats and another group. So here again, um, an overview what we already did at the campus. Um, so we actually rescued the bats and we also invited other scientists um, to do a monitoring on the campus for FFH. Um, that was also really successful because we were able to organize free spots in the campus where um, the bed quarters could be mount, uh, yeah, mounted overnight. So there was a lot of data we, we gained through that. Um, now we have an ongoing project, a citizen science project as well, where, ex um, um, for example, Tom is participating of our team um, and it's with the city department for environment and uh, the NGO we save the beds together with and yeah um, we do uh, as well a monitoring on the campus in the project that's called urban biodiversity at the campus and it's a specific habitature project that I do together with others um, and we are also um, involving EcoCampus Wien as a team to do the monitoring in the project um, so it's the follow-up of the bed rescue, actually. And we do own recordings with bed quarters and uh, for in the course of the citizen science project, um, we are learning how to, um, yeah, how to validate the data and how to work with it further. Um, and for the future, to give you a small overview of our future activities, as Simon already said, we are improving the mowing plan um, we're increase, increasing the habitat diversity. Um, for for example, we will put some dead wood um, in yeah in the next months over the summer, um, and there will be a lot of possibilities for people who are interested to come to the campus and um, join activities. Actually, so um, we will also um, mount the um, the nesting boxes for beds and swifts. We will have other surveys, for, um, especially on pharma, because we didn't, um, yeah, so like we said, uh, bumblebees and butterflies and yeah, there will be also some flora uh, surveys, I hope so. Um, and the basis uh, that we work on is actually a catalog that um, some people did some time ago and it's nature conservation measures for the campus especially. Um, so it's also, uh, it, it also evolved in a framework of different interdisciplinary views on the campus. Um, and we still want to keep that going. So we try to also involve art methods on the campus, um, but maybe we can tell more about that uh, when we come for the next time because we are um, also trying to uh, create new projects now. And uh, by having the project of Bloom, there's a lot of things going on by now. And uh, to come to the end of our presentation, we can show you a photo that is probably a motivation for you as well uh, to get active for biodiversity because the spirits were really high, um, despite the fact that we also uh, see Reva as a company a bit critical you can say yeah. but what's I think we need to clarify Isa I think we need to clarify <laughs> about Rewe because uh, this uh, yeah. foundation Blühen is Österreich that we uh, got this uh, grant money from is a, a foundation uh, from the Rewe Corporation um, and yeah uh, <laughs> which we are, don't 100% agree with their their uh, company practices, but it's great that they do support so many initiatives for biodiversity and uh, environmental protection. As you can see uh, on this photo, there's uh, lots of different groups who also uh, got grant money, such as uh, scouts, uh, farmers, and other student initiatives such as us. So they really, they do, they do important work, but uh, it's still uh, a big corporation. Yeah. So yeah, so you see the vibes and uh, I think it's uh, really good to, to get active and to share knowledge and yeah, work together with others.
to reach the aims that we, I think, all follow. So um, thanks for the interest and for the invitation. And uh, you can always write us, contact us, and um, please stay, stay tuned for more. Thank you so much, Isa. Thank you so much, uh, Simon. Uh, well, first of all, it was really cool to see all the projects. And yeah, congratulations also for the award. And I think it's actually very nice that you've been transparent and also highlighted the controversy. So it's, it's uh, to my side, was really, it was really interesting to see. And many of these things could also be applied here at our campus. Um, so yeah, it's time for some discussion. Of course, questions are addressed to both. So feel free to jump in. Uh, actually, I have a super like, you say, like broad question. So how does your ideal campus look like? So where does, how much biodiversity would you like to have? So, and uh, yeah, you can both answer to this. Would you like to start? I'm very I, interested in your answer. I can start, yeah. Um, so obviously the campus uh, as it is, doesn't, is, it's interesting that there is as much biodiversity as it is because really the, the measures that have been taken there are diametrically opposed to what would be probably best for biodiversity. So it's super astonishing uh, that there are as many species there as we have recorded, which is a good sign. But obviously, we think that with with if you actually take measures like we're trying to do now to increase the biodiversity friendliness of these spaces, it could be a lot better. But the, the, the main problems that we, we have essentially are um, the mowing plan, which we are working on. So all of the, the, the meadows there, um, which would provide important uh, spaces basically for insects. Um, if you cut these uh, grasses down uh, too early, they can't provide the habitat for, uh, sufficiently provide a habitat for, for animals anymore. So you need to uh, stagger the mowing regime, um, or or not mow as much as, as you are currently doing. So that's what we're trying to do and successfully have been communicating to the university. Uh, other things are, um, uh, how do you say it uh, in English? Bodenversiegelung, um, uh, which is... Um, Sealed soil. Yeah. Uh, basically not not build as much, but with, this is a, a problem in... in a, a, outside the campus, more actually outside because there's, I think only one uh, plot left on campus that they actually can build on, which they are going to do. But basically the, 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 the areas that are not um, paved over uh, yet, they, they will still stay that way essentially. So that's good, but you could still improve by creating more um, open, my English has disappeared right now, sorry. <laughs> no, no, it's fine, it's um, very fine, go ahead, no worries. Uh, so you could uh, end seeking, uh, basically remove paving and create more, more uh, natural areas where you can also, where water can, can, um, Sorry, uh, Isa, Isa, continue. I'm going to I'm going to uh, look up some vocabulary and then maybe <laughs> it's okay. No, I think you already you already got some quite some ideas. And Isa, yeah. I don't know if you want to add anything to this or. Um, yeah, I I would say that it's fascinating how biodiverse the campus already is. As I showed you, there's a photo. So I had a uh, had a meeting with a bachelor um, <laughs> last night. So it was really nice um, to see that there are bachelors and foxes living. There is even a snake living on the campus. We don't tell you where, but there is snakes living. And um, yeah, it's really fascinating how much biodiversity already exists on the campus. And for me, I would say that um, it's interesting to go the way towards the experiment and to see what is possible because it's also um, a testing site we're having on the campus. 
because there is really a lot of people walking um, along the paths, laying in the meadows, and it is a um, a process, I would say, um, where we can also see how much its uh, biodiversity can actually take and how much we can implement and what will happen um, due to climate change because uh, this is happening so fast and we can al already see results as well. And we have big issue with neobiota on the campus as well. So uh, of course, everything is changing really rapidly. Yeah, and I'm saying it's it's an ongoing conversation with the public and that's where it's really important to, I think, uh, obviously in, in uh, areas outside of, of urban spaces, it's a lot easier to just say, okay, we're going to let nature do its thing there and everything just grows how, however it wants. That's easier to do at a place that's not as frequently visited uh, by people and used by people as a public recreational space of the campus. So that's an interesting conversation to be had and to show people uh, what biodiversity means in practice at a space that they can also use for recreational purposes. And that that does not necessarily, those ideas don't necessarily conflict with each other. So you can uh, use a biodiversity friendly space for for recreation that's uh, possible so i'm uh, going through the the questions in the chat right now yes exactly um, uh, maybe yeah. <laughs> we can start from so nico is asking yeah the first one can you tell us where the spaces are located that you're going to protect in the framework of blue hand uh, yes and so are they are... also here in san marks uh no they they are all at the at the campus um, because that's basically the, the, our, our area of, of uh, operation, so to say. Um, uh, the areas are located, so the main area is the uh, uh, yard number 13, just south of the Narrenturm. Uh, so it's at the very north, uh, very north uh, area of the uh, campus. You're right, exactly right here. Uh -huh. Um, so this is the, the Narrenturm, over here is the dentistry clinic, uh, and this is the main area where we're going to do most of our um, planting of new structures and creation of, of uh, uh, dead wood piles and so on. And then there's um, more areas right here uh, next to the dentistry clinic. Uh, I, I just realized you can see my cursor. <laughs> um, so. Uh, the area uh, on the left, uh, right next to the, there's this, this road uh, on the left of the Narraturm and then another area, um, which is also going to, I think we said we're going to do the, the sizing there. Isa? I'm having a hard time keeping track of what areas we're going to size and which ones we are not. <laughs> Okay, but it's, I mean, it's around your campus. Exactly, Actually, yeah. there's another que question from Teresa, then I will jump back to Nico. Mm -hmm. uh, thanks for the inspiring talk. I would like to know how you got started. Could you tell us a bit about it? Uh, I think many people feel the urge to get active, but sometimes it's hard to know where, how to start. So I would love to hear how you did it at the beginning of it. Yeah, so maybe I can answer the question. Um, actually, it started with, um... With getting, uh, with me getting to know that there is, first of all, the opportunity to have a community garden on the campus 13 years ago. Then being a community gardener and seeing one day that there is landscape architects appearing on the campus, measuring it and uh, talking to them and hearing um, that there will be a redesign of the public site um, for the university. Um, uh, no anniversary of the university, kind of like 25 years of campus or something like this. Um, and there would be a um, uh, um, Landschaftsplanerischer Wettbewerb, so uh, how is that called? Competition, a landscape architectural competition on the campus. And yeah, therefore, um, some things would change. And I was actually um, collaborating with these landscape architects and uh, yeah. Um, they were implementing the idea to have more gardens because I saw that the garden in the campus is really high in biodiversity um, and mainly uh, a really 
good habitat for insects because we have really a lot of different insects. And we also had a study there in 2017 when we saw that we have the highest density of um, wild bees um, in the um, yeah in the areas where um, a monitoring took place from the scientists of the Boko back then. So it had been 13 community gardens and the one in the campus was the one with the highest density of wild bee. Um, species. So we have around 50 wild bee species that are proven in the garden. Um, and later I found out that another architectural office won the competition and uh, I called them because I wanted to ask them if they would uh, take care of the wild bee habitats on the campus and found out that they would actually not take care of the existing biodiverse structures of the campus. And by that time, um, at first, as a um, yeah, singular person, tried to reach out for others, helping me to protect the habitats, basically. And then after some time, I did a lot of networking with scientists in Germany. Also met Sophie Lokatius and Andreas Philipp Unterweger, so really um, good e experts in biodiversity and um, landscape uh, ecology also. And yeah, then we did this measurement catalog for the campus and started a political process also with the district. Uh, so the Eisebund, the ninth district of Vienna, which is uh, where the campus is located. And there was also some political, um, how to say, it was also on the political agenda of the district. And they said that they also want to protect the wild bee habitats, which was really good. And yeah, and by the time I've seen that, the, yeah, the, the public service um, departments don't do as much as they maybe could. Maybe they're also under pressure, but uh, in means of time or resources. But um, yeah, I found out that it's something that you do have to do sometimes by yourself, you know. So, um, and then I invited others. I tried to get a lot of people inside um, this process. And uh, the, the one, um uh, scientist I told you about, Philip Andreas Unterweger, it was also his idea first to uh, mow with sims at the campus, actually. He also told me about that idea at first. I thought it's nonsense, but then I uh, saw that it's really a great idea. And he also said that I could um, yeah, connect with student union or something. So I tried to do that. And uh, by the contact with the students union um, and the eco, yeah, eco department of the students union, um, we had a meeting and then we met together as a group and basically by that point of time it happened to yeah to work together as a group and then we founded uh, Eco Campus Wien and now we exist since one and a half years or even more actually since October 2021 which is really a great thing as you can see so yeah it's always good to uh, form groups and invite others and work together on that yeah definitely i mean i'm really like it's really cool to see all the initiatives you had and also the, the strength to to carry it to start it and i mean for Teresa and everyone uh, interested i think already starting a conversation between our campus and yours to start so now the channel is open and we can ask you also for advice and everything so hope this will follow up and will become concrete also for us uh, there's more questions so from Lillian, uh, is urban nature, apart from parks and gardens, also trees that grow at the highways or abandoned buildings? How do you define, okay, how do you define urban nature more generally? Uh -huh. So I would say that there's a really um, interesting uh, view on urban nature by the, um, how is it called, National Park City approach that I really like. It's a geographer from London. I don't know his name by now. Um, but a uh, really cool guy, I was once uh, joining a talk um, that he made online and um, he basically sees the whole city with all its human built infrastructure as um, part of the uh, a national park city concept as well. And it's something that I also really like because um, it um, yeah it tries tries to also contain even the the things that humans build because I think it's um, it's very uh, romantic to think that we can I mean we try to restore ecosystems of course or we we try to uh, co-create actually new new urban wilderness maybe or new urban you know uh, I would even not say in German I wouldn't say 
weirdness, but weird heights. So we try to, um, even with the, the changing backgrounds that we have, like climate change is happening. Meanwhile, we have a lot of uh, yeah changing paradigms all around. So I would say we're working within such a very complex framework and we try to look basically what is here in terms of biodiversity and habitats. And then we try to, in a very sensitive way, strengthen that and support that. So we also don't do really, um, I don't know, harsh or brutal, you know, we don't dig in really. I mean, it could can also be really nice for wild bees, for example, to really uh, go into motion. But um, I think that it's very interesting to even take urban infrastructure into that approach as far as possible. It can also mean that you go, as Simon say, to um, remove pavements, for example, and unseal them and include them kind of in a different way. So, but it's, I think it really helps to, from the approach to um, see it as part of all of that, as you say. So it's not, um, yeah, it's not something that we design out or, yeah. Okay, thank you. Uh, on a more practical note, because before you mentioned about the siting, uh, Nick is asking who will be the siters? It involves more manpower than moving with a machine. So how do you deal with this extra work from people? And are there also workshops for this? Yes, so right now we have to actually hurry a bit up because we uh, the summer is on and it would be really good to mow in June. So we are now waiting for the, the award money to come to our bank account and then to be able to buy the synths. And we, we will try to offer a synth workshop. This is the plan. So if not in June, then in autumn. And uh, we basically will also learn same thing then. So we, we will invite others, but as well uh, learn it ourselves because some of, most of us don't know how to do it. Um, yeah, it will be much more manpower, it's true. So um, we are now a group of approximately 10 people, I would say, Simon. Um, what do you say? I don't actually know. But yeah, I think that's about a dozen, yeah. <laughs> Yeah, something like that. So, yeah, we will have a lot uh, also of planning to do to be able to to manage that. But I think as soon as we are, um, we know how to do it, it will be not a big problem because we also have partners. So there's one person, for example, from the medical university who is also supporting our work and even cooperating um, with us and also reducing the more, um, yeah. So uh, it's it's something that will for sure work, but it is of course a lot of work. That's true. But we will yeah. mow maximum twice a year, and we will mow um, perhaps we will mow parts of the the sites and leave the rest also over winter, and then we will mow the other part next year, and we will also um, do some experiments with that and see how the uh, the the plants are changing, how, what effects it has, and then we will see further what is the best way to do it, actually. Mm -hmm. Actually, there's a related question. So how to promote like these procedures when yeah, grass robots are getting so popular? So how to advertise this technique, which for sure is better, but it's definitely more work, right? How to convince people to do it? Um, I think it's very simple because it's... Uh, um, Mm, because it's so, it contains a lot of things. As I said, uh, it's it was actually not my own idea. I mean, um, I had the wish to learn something since I'm a child, but as my parents never t uh, taught me that, uh, somehow I forgot about that wish. But later, this uh, scientist came up with the idea, and and I think it's perfect because it is, it's it's degrowth. You know, it is it is not fossil fuel related at all. So it means you don't need motor oil, you don't need nothing, but the yeah, the Werkzeug, so the uh, the synth. Um, you need people who do it and who want to be outside and move in nature. Because, I mean, if you are allergic to grass, then it's a problem. But I think for others it can be, um, yeah, I think it can be nice. I mean, I see that the interest now is quite high in the activities we do. I think, um, yeah, if, I mean, maybe it's not for everyone, of course, it's not, but um, learning together, being outside, 
um, being not uh, being also not how to say you don't need to go far because it's in the city center you know it's not like you go some people go to see farms in Tyrol and travel there for five hours and we do it in the city center so it's also something really cool that you bring cultural techniques back to a place where they are actually yeah they they used to be as well but and you know the fun fact is that there is this street and it's called Sensengasse. if you uh, translated it would mean sin uh, street so it's really funny <laughs> back to the origin yeah <laughs> cool really cool um i think i read all the questions we had a very nice discussion actually and as i said this is just the beginning so i hope oh, this will there's not... one question sorry uh this is, the, is it there? With the rescue of the forest maybe somebody wants to tell about it okay i lost it but please go ahead yes. go ahead answer it it's the last question i think simon do you want to answer can you tell us how you managed to rescue the forest at Altus Akaha? Uh, right, yeah. So basically, we, we didn't, <laughs> unfortunately. Uh, this was just uh, shortly before I came to the group, but um, the forest was cut down, but we are basically uh, just in contact with the, the people at the university who were responsible for that and trying to prevent it from happening again. So that's, uh, unfortunately, we weren't able to prevent that. Um, but, yeah. <laughs> yeah but, but we managed, we, we managed uh, that it will never happen, happen again yeah. in the future. So this yeah. is really a good thing, yeah. yeah. Hopefully, so, yeah. Yes. <laughs> okay, super. Thank you so much. It was, uh, was really educative and cool to see, very fascinating. Uh, well, we hope to have you here in person eventually and also to visit you. Uh, but for now, I think we can uh, wrap it up. And thank you again and have a good evening. And have a good evening, everybody. Bye bye.